Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. It's good to be here. It's good to see everyone. Uh, if you didn't get an individual uh, container for the Lord's Supper, why well, raise your hand and uh, someone will be glad to bring that to you. <clears throat> Let's begin by singing, Father, hear the prayer we offer, and after this song we will have our opening prayer. <clears throat> Father, hear the prayer we offer, nor for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may still waters would we idly quiet stay <clears throat> but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way be our strength in hours of Father, we come before you now thanking you for this day that you've created for us. Thank you for the rain that we've had this week. Thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us. We're mindful this morning as we come together, those who I remember who are, are sick or not feeling well, we ask your blessings upon them, your healing hand upon them. We ask your healing hand upon this country that others may see your love through us that they will know your peace. We ask that you be with those who serve our great country, both here and abroad, those who serve in our military, those who serve this community locally. At this time of year, as our children and teachers are preparing to head back to school, we ask your blessings upon them. We ask your blessings upon this upcoming school year as it will be safe and that our children will, will learn much. We ask your blessings upon this church here in Crumb. In Christ's name, amen. In a few minutes, we'll have a few thoughts on the Lord's Supper, and we'll have the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper. Let's sing this time, Nail to the Cross, as we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper and get our minds set about thinking about our dear Savior. <clears throat> there was one who was willing to die in my stead that my soul so unworthy might live and the path to the cross he was willing to tread all the sins of my life to forgive. They are 
2 Corinthians 12, 9, Paul states, But the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. You know, most of us are pretty good about bragging about our strengths and our natural abilities and talents that we've worked hard to develop. We have physical strengths and intellectual capacities and emotional competence, spiritual gifts. There are even elements that measure our strengths. I've taken a few of those classes through the years at work. It helps us discover what we do best and how to develop our greatest strengths and maximize our potential. But we enjoy talking about, hearing about and boasting about our strengths. But like we saw with Paul, shouldn't we boast about our weaknesses? This seems very contrary to the lives that we live in this country and in the world. What the examples that we see are modeled. One of the important elements of Alcoholics Anonymous groups is telling your story. It's not sharing your strengths, but your weaknesses, your habits, your hurts, your hangups. It's about being humble open, transparent, and vulnerable. Other people that hear your truth can relate to it and be transformed as well. As followers of Christ, we do this for God's glory. As we share our frailties, God's power is unleashed and is perfected in our weaknesses. People see God's power and love, his compassion and mercy through us. His grace is sufficient for us in all that we need. I do not need more money or possessions or power. I do not need my best life now. His grace is enough. So as we focus on Jesus, his death on the cross and the forgiveness of sins and the eternal life that we have, God shouts to us, my grace is sufficient for you. As Jesus willingly sacrificed his body and shed his blood for our forgiveness of he shouted from the cross, it's finished. His grace is sufficient for all. Shall we pray? Dear Father in heaven, we're so thankful and humble to be in your presence. We're thankful, Father, for this bread, which represents your son's body that was given in our stead. We pray, Father, we will partake in a manner pleasing unto you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we pray? Dear Father, we're thankful for this cup which represents your son's blood that was shed for us. Father, we're so thankful for Jesus' sacrifice, willingly take, taking our sins upon him that we might be free once and for all. We're thankful, Father, for him. In Jesus' name, amen. temptation for yielding is sin each victory will help you some other to win fight manfully onward dark passion subdue <coughs> look ever to Jesus He'll carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. If it's convenient for you, let's stand for this song. Uh, after this song, we'll have our scripture reading and we'll have our, our uh, lesson from Bill. <clears throat> when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey not a burden we bear not a sorrow we share, but our toll he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowships we, we will sit at His feet, or we'll walk by His side in the way. What He says we will do, where He sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Please be seated.
Today's scripture reading is Job 42, 1 through 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hath a counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye, mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. It is an honor to stand before you this morning, and I thank you for choosing to be present. These past two Sundays, we've had a couple lessons on the subject of suffering. We've asked, why does God allow it, and who or what causes it? I want you to know that you can find both of these lessons on the Crumb Church of Christ YouTube channel. And now today's lesson is entitled, How Can We Prepare For It? And you heard our scripture reading of Job 42 verses 1 through 6. Now in this study of the problem of suffering thus far, we've looked at why God allows it to exist, and we have examined some of the possible causes of suffering. Even so, I would very quickly admit there is much that we do not understand. It is my prayer that we are closer to being able to use suffering in our lives for good, for the glory of God and to the betterment of ourselves. After all of his problems, it is interesting to me to notice that Job had this humble attitude at the end of his story in our scripture reading of Job 42 verses 1 through 6, and we hear Job say, and I repent sitting on dust and ashes in verse 6. After all that you find in chapters 1 through 41, here at the end, we see humility. And so we find a man here who is ready to put God and God's will first in all matters of Job's life. In this final lesson, I want to wish, or I wish to suggest some ways that we can prepare ourselves for any suffering that might come and very likely will come our way. There are several things that we can develop in our lives that will help us to deal with the problem of suffering. First is, develop trust in God through an active Bible life. This is a profound point to make. Scriptures abound with promises that God is with his children in their troubles. In the Old Testament, for instance, we have uh, Psalms 46, verses 1 through 3, where we read, God is our refuge and strength, a very ready help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth shakes, and the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake in its swelling pride. In other words, the earth can just shake all it wants. Because God is our refuge and our strength. We consider Psalm 55 verse 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never Allow the righteous to be shaken. God will never give up on his people. We've got to hang tough and hang on to him and put our burdens on him. That is one of the real problems we have when it comes to 
difficulties in our life is we often choose not to put our burdens on him. Too many times we try to handle them by ourselves and we're always choosing for deeper problems when we do that. Now, we've looked at a couple passages from the Old Testament. Let us now go to the New Testament. For instance, Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. Paul writes, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is one of those all-inclusive lists. I, I see Paul writing here by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but I see him writing, and he's writing, say, okay, I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. Because I want my readers in Rome to know that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is found, always found, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's look at the writings of Peter here in 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. That sounds like the behavior of Job to me. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time. You see, when you humble self, God has a way of exalting you. And it will always be at the right moment. And in the last verse, having cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Again, here's another verse that teaches us to put our cares upon the Lord. He wants to hear from us. He wants to share our burdens. He has bigger shoulders than we have. And then we're also reminded that he cares for us. To receive this wonderful help of God in times of trouble, we must trust in him. As the prophet Nahum implied in Nahum 1 verse 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. You can trust God to know you. He knows your deepest faults, your deepest anxieties, your deepest troubles. And since he knows all this, just give in and put them on his shoulders as well. Trust in him. Share your troubles with him. Cast them on him. As is promised by the song written by Isaiah here in Isaiah uh, 26, uh, verses 3 and 4. The steadfast of mine you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in God the Lord we have an everlasting rock. Don't you, aren't you thankful that God is our everlasting rock that we can always hold on to? But that brings up a question, how do we develop this kind of trust? Well, first of all, we start with faith. And faith is a synonym for trust which comes through the Word of God. For you to have faith, it takes the Word of God. And we find in Romans 10, verse 17, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ. Those who read and meditate upon the Word of God will develop that sort of trust which will sustain them in all things. Or as we find here in Psalm 119, 165, those who love your law have great peace. And nothing causes them to stumble. How is that? Because when you are a student of God's word, you're just better armed 
the fight, the temptations, and the pressures, and the stumbling that the devil throws out in front of you. So I want you to know, this, all of this is just another reason why we need to be diligent in our daily reading of God's Word. It can't help you if you don't know it. And then... After you know God's word, you'll be like that blessed man described here in the first three verses of Psalms. In Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3, which reads, Blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Let's pause there and just think that verse 1 is an awesome verse. It's a three-point sermon. You can talk about people walking with the wicked and people who love to sit uh, or stand in the path of sinners and those who love to sit in the seats of scoffers. In other words, you're talking about someone who always chooses the wrong people and the wrong places to go and be with or be at. The better way, but referring to the person that is blessed here, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Knowing God's word, being a student of it, is not just a once in a while thing to do when you have opportunity. It is to be a way, the way of your life. And what happens to you when you make God's word the way your life. You'll be like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season, its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. I have a tree beside my house that demonstrates heat and dry stress every summer. I have almost as many leaves to pick up in the summertime from this tree that doesn't like a lack of rain as I do in the wintertime when that tree drops all of its leaves. I will not recommend this tree to anyone. It always, and I'm telling you right now, it is severely demonstrating wither from heat stress and dryness. You're not going to be that way when you're firmly planted by the streams uh, of water provided by God in your life. Your leaf will always be bright green. You'll never wither. And at the same time, the second point of our lesson, develop communion with God through an active prayer life. See, the Bible teaches us to pray in times of suffering. Consider James 5.13. If anyone among you is suffering, then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. The point we're emphasizing here is that when suffering comes your way, it's time to be on your knees. Those are some of the most intimate times with your father. And we have good example. Jesus certainly prayed during his greatest trials. We find him praying in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26, verses 36, 44. And one of the parallel passages relates that his praying, the sweating in his prayer like great drops of blood. They were so heavy. We find him praying while he was on the cross at Calvary in Luke 23, verses 34 and 46. Addressing his father twice. We also find the early church fervent in prayer when 
their leaders are being persecuted. And we read in Acts 12 verse 5. So Peter was kept in prison. But prayer for him was being made to God. Intensely by the church. God's family in Jerusalem were seeking for the release for Peter. They didn't, they didn't know how it might happen. They just wanted him to be saved. Well we know that God was not finished yet with Peter, sent his angel to release him from jail, and Peter really didn't quite know what was going on. And so we find in Acts 12, verse 6, when he realized this, that is, that he had been released from prison by God, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And we know for sure that their prayers also involved prayers for Peter as well. Can you imagine what everybody thought when the servant girl came and said, oh, Peter's at the door. Well, we know what they thought. They didn't believe her. He had to keep knocking to get them to let him in. Prayer is powerful. And one of the reasons it is powerful is because we receive the inner peace necessary to sustain us in our trials. I've seen people deal with some great difficulties in their life. I've gone away amazed, impressed, and admiring them, wondering how did they do that. Well, Scripture gives us an indication of how God's people are able to hang tough in such difficult times. We read in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and pleading with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God is beyond our ability to fully understand it and comprehend it. But it is there. It is promised. And I've seen it in the lives of people that have faced in great difficulties. I need to make this important point. The time to develop our prayer life is before suffering comes. Prayer is not a great big band-aid. Be used now and then whenever you have a hurt or a scrape in your life. Find Jeremiah 12 verse 5. If you have run with infantrymen and they have tired you out, how can you compete with the horses? If you fall down in a land of peace, how will you do in the thicket by the Jordan? I've, this verse is profoundly humorous and it is it makes such an important point go wear yourself out with all the other foot soldiers how can you keep up with the guys on the horses you're not if you fall down in the land of peace and where it's flat and smooth how are you going to deal with the thicket that is by the Jordan you can look today at the Jordan River and it is a thicket much like you'll find sometimes around our rivers and creeks. These, this verse is making the point that if our strength is small, when we're dealing with minor frustrations of life, then how will we be able to be strong when we're faced with major difficulties that suffering often brings? Well, the way we deal with those major events is that if God is already our friend with whom we are close to and not a stranger, then when the difficult moments come, we will be ready to handle them with God's help. Here's another profoundly important point 
about dealing with suffering. And tragically, too many people miss this point in their lives. You need to develop Christian friendships through an active church life. The preacher of Ecclesiastes wrote of the value of having friends. We read in Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 and 10, If two are better than one, or two are better than one, because they have good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. You've all heard of the word energy. There's also another word called synergy. Synergy is the idea, the fact, that two can often do more working together than two working apart. It has been proven you can link animals together and pull more with the animals working as a team than you can with those animals individually. And the same applies to us. Woe to the one who falls when there's not a friend nearby to help them. You see, when two are working together, they can help each other in their troubles, but woe to that one who must face suffering alone. God intended the church to provide this kind of mutual encouragement. As members together in the body of Christ, we are to have the same care for one another. It is tragic when people do not have the same care for one another. Let us look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 24 to 26. But God so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same care for one another. And if one part of the body suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts rejoice with it. We see that in our own bodies. You can stub your toe and your whole body is messed up. Anybody that's ever broke a toe knows that's a fact. And yet, if your heart is warmed by an act of kindness, your whole body feels the warmness. The best way to develop such helpful relationships is to, uh, or I, I want to point, those who are strong are required to help those who are weaker. And it's also taught in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 14. So we have it here in 1 Corinthians 12, 25, and also 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. We have a responsibility to each other. And the best way to develop these kind of helpful relationships is to take an active part in the family of life of your local church family. You do that by becoming involved. You make your presence felt by frequent and consistent assembling with God's family. Consistent assembling. Be a regular volunteer participant in the work of the church. The family of God is a volunteer organization. And only by volunteer service does so much get done. You can also visit the sick, help the needy, encourage the weak, take pride in, in welcoming new members. See, helping others in their time of suffering can often soften the shock of suffering in your own life. There are times when we need to visit the sick, 
Sadly, the hospitals are still not cooperating in allowing that to be as free as it once was before the year of 2020. Attend funerals. The bereaved at funerals will make it easier for you when it comes your turn. I believe strongly in this statement. Someone has said, if you're too busy to bury the dead, you're too busy. It's tragic that we don't attend funerals like we once did in times past. So become more than just a pew warmer. Those who do such things will never lack support in their time of trouble. If you're not diligent to visit others in their time of need, don't be surprised if others are not quick to come to your side when the need is there. Not that they shouldn't, but it can be difficult to effectively assist those who have chosen to remain distant and indifferent in their relationship to others. So we conclude by developing trust in God through an active Bible life, by developing communion with God through an active prayer life, and by developing Christian friendships through an active church life, we can go a long way in preparing ourselves to deal with adversity, suffering, and sorrow. That's my solution to such problems. Based on what we find in God's word, as we've just studied. Burdens can either shatter or strengthen our faith. And I've seen tragedy do both, brethren. Those that it shatters their faith, many times they're lost forever. Those that are that have their faith strengthened, just continue to shine. And what I've noticed is often, it seems to me, that God uses them as a resource to others dealing with similar tragedies in their life. They become a counselor to others again and again. This is God pruning us to use us when we have been trained by some of the hard, difficult moments of life. Now, which it's going to be for you, whether it destroys you or strengthens you, will depend upon how well you have prepared yourself. Jesus has taught us that the key to overcoming the storms of life comes from laying a proper foundation. One that is created from both hearing and doing His Word. Once again, you've heard these passages many times, but treasure them again. Matthew 7, verses, beginning with verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, there's the key, and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, the winds blew, and slammed against the house. And yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them. In other words, they become a forgetful hearer. In other words, it goes in one ear and out the other. Again, and does not act on them will be like... A foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came. The winds blew and slammed against the house and it fell. And its collapse was great. We've all seen pictures of houses being washed away by a flood and collapsing. And disappearing into floodwaters. That's what I picture here. 
So we should be asking ourselves, are we preparing ourselves for the days of suffering that most of us will likely face? Ecclesiastes 3.1 says there is an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every matter under heaven. And though this may be true, let's remember the encouraging words of the writer to the Hebrews in Hebrews 4 verses 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who is past through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let's hold firmly to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things just as we are yet without sin. Therefore, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. May we all find that wonderful mercy and grace in our lives, in our times of need. If there's something amiss in your life and you're on our live stream, and there's something we can do to be of help to you spiritually, we would invite you to go to our website, find our email address, and contact us and let us know how we can be of help to you. And if you're present this morning, if there's anything that we can do to be of help to you spiritually, this song of encouragement is for you. We would invite you to come forward. Make your needs known. Let us be of help right now as we stand and as we sing. Hark the gentle voice of Jesus calling tenderly upon your ear. Sweet his cry of love and pity calling turn and listen, stay and hear. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, lean upon your dear Lord's breast. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you Obeying, bear his burden to him take. Find the yoke, his hand is on you laying, light and easy for his sake. He that labor and are heavy laden lean upon you. that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Please be seated. Thank you, Bill. This uh, morning in Bible class, we were uh, talking about Matthew 24 and the apostles grabbed Jesus and said, look at this magnificent temple. And Herod had built this temple uh, because he needed to accommodate a lot of people that Jerusalem and the surrounding areas may have had two or 300,000 people living there, but during the three main festivals, it grew to over a million people were there. So they this. They say the walls around there were 20 stories high and 15 feet wide. And they had stones, average of 10 tons per stone. And they said there was one stone there that was 400 tons, which they said modern equipment. They don't know that they could move that stone. And they said you can't, there was no mortar and you couldn't even put a piece of paper between the stones. They were so tight. So that was an amazing sight. Those men saw and they were amazed by it but what we need to gather from that I believe is that 
that was all destroyed. <laughs> it was gone. Uh, Titus came in and destroyed it. When I was in Rome, I saw an ark of triumph. It was called Titus's Ark, and so they built that ark to celebrate when he came home to celebrate that he had destroyed Jerusalem. So it was interesting. What we need to realize is we're part of the spiritual kingdom, and it's an amazing thing. And uh, we partake of this Lord's Supper, the bread and the fruit of the vine. That's amazing, too, because that's a memorial that can't be destroyed. It's so simple. So Jesus gave us a perfect thing. We looked at uh, John 14, and Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's where we need to build our foundation. Just some thoughts I, that came to me today through bio, an excellent Bible class and worship we had, and the fact that we can deal with suffering by putting our lives in Jesus Christ. As far as our announcements, the uh, August 16th has been chosen as the Dyer Elementary Teachers Prayer Breakfast to be hosted by us, the church. There's a sign-up list on the back uh, board, and uh, if you want to sign up for that. Donations, if you want to give some donations to Kay or Bill, Kay's going to put together goodie bags artistically designed goodie bags. All food items should be prepared at the building by 7.15 on that morning. And we'll start the breakfast at 7.30. I think there's some openings for cleaners too, to clean up. Uh, first Tuesday game day is August 2nd. That's this coming Tuesday already. We're into August. Sympathy is expressed to the family of Jennifer Hayes, the sister of Jeff Hayes, who passed away. Services are pending. Jim uh, is under the weather, and Brenda's been sick for about 10 days, and she's on some medication to get better with that going on. So keep them in your prayers. Anything <clears throat> I'm missing at all? Let's uh, bow together as we finish our worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the fact that we have your word to strengthen us, that we have the avenue of prayer, that we can pray through a sympathetic high priest that understands the struggles we go through. We're thankful that we have the family of God, a uh, temple, your temple, that can't be destroyed. People can destroy us, they can destroy our bodies, but the spiritual temple continues on. We thank you for that. Thank you for that blessing. We pray that we can reach out to others to help them recognize what a wonderful good news message that is, a indestructible temple and a life forever with you. Father, we pray that you'll be with all the teachers and students getting ready for school to start. We pray that you'll be with us as we reach out with a, putting together a prayer breakfast. Help us to serve that way and serve that, church, that school community any way we can through the year. Father, we pray for the family of Jennifer Hayes at that loss. We pray you'll bless them and give them strength. We pray that you be with Jim and Brenda and help them to both feel better. We know Jim's also going through radiation treatments and we pray that goes well, as well as for Charles who started those treatments also. We pray it should be with Randy Hudson and Earl Bingston dealing with various kinds of cancer. We pray that they all completely recover and get better and feel better. We pray that you be with the Andrea Polk situation that's going on and bless her Father, be with Carla Podshadley and Lena Russell and Sally Joe. Be with MD and Oma and Jean Irwin, Paul and Sandra, and James and Theopol. And um, we're sad they can't be here. We're thankful they have places that they can be, homes to be in that uh, they're taken care of. Father, be with our missionaries, be with our military, protecting our freedom, those we know well, Wesley Downs, Jared and Logan. Father, bless our lives and your service. Help us to deal with 
the ups and downs of life, the heartaches that come, as well as uh, understanding that we have much joy in this life and we have much heartache and we always need to turn to you in any time. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.